everyone welcome back today we're going to be doing the third prompt of the 500 drawing prompts book and we have sandcastle for those of you who don't know about this book it's basically a sketchbook that has a bunch of random words inside of it and it gives you prompts and challenges you to create a new illustration each time i've already done two of these so if you haven't seen them yet then definitely check them out for this prompt i already started to sketch out my idea and I knew I wanted to have a sandcastle, obviously. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, I, I was thinking of like a little turtle that's hiding from a bunch of seagulls. So on this page of the actual prompts book, I'm sketching out all of my ideas so I have them ready when I go into the finish. And I came up with this little cute slouched baby turtle <laughs> that's gonna be sitting inside the sandcastle and all the seagulls will be basically on top looking for him and one's actually gonna notice him. I decided to have three seagulls. One's gonna be sitting on each of the towers of the sandcastle. And I wanted to make sure that I actually capture the personality of these characters in my piece because I felt that it was really important to catch their attitudes. I wanted the turtle to be super innocent and I wanted the seagulls to be tough guys trying to spy or search for him. Once I feel like everything's ready to go and I have my plan set, so there's no surprises. I get my sketchbook out and I begin to sketch the final drawing. So while you guys are watching me create this piece, I decided to give you a few tips and talk a little bit about composition and how to compose a picture properly. So first of all, composition is the way that you organize shapes on your piece of paper. Now, why I said shapes and not the actual picture is because Essentially, our picture is made up of shapes, whether they're organic or inorganic. What distinguishes from a good composition and a bad composition is actually, in my opinion, the way you make use of the page. You want to make sure that you're actually utilizing the page as best as you can and as efficiently and as beautifully as possible. Now, if you're given a nice big piece of paper, you want to use all that space that you have. Don't draw a tiny little circle or whatever you're drawing in the middle of the paper. You want to use all of that space. So tip number one, use all that space. Whatever shape your paper is, whether it's horizontal, vertical, a square, a circle, an oval, you want to think of it as a frame and you're positioning and organizing all of your shapes from your picture inside of that. Sort of like when you're taking a picture with your phone, you're moving the camera around and you're finding the best view to capture that picture in the frame. Personally, when I compose my picture, I think of all the shapes and lines and curves to work with one another. They all have to be cohesive and they all have to make sense together. So tip number two, make sure that all your shapes, all your lines, they make sense, they're clear. And whatever it is that you're drawing is positioned properly. And I just want to say one more thing about composition. I want to talk about the positive and negative space, which I think is super, super important. Basically, the positive space is the picture itself, the space that's inside your image. And the negative space is actually what's outside, like the sky and the white space around your image, which is basically around the sandcastle here. Not only do you want to make sure that the shapes inside of your image work, but you also want to make sure that the shapes outside of that work as well. That's why sometimes people practice doing silhouettes because the black shape of the silhouette helps you understand the white negative space around it. So tip number three, pay attention to what's going on around your image as well, because that's just as important as what's going on inside. Okay, so I'm gonna get back into talking more about this prompt and the colors that I chose and the composition of it as well. I decided to use a bright yellow for the sandcastle and a bright blue, which I think I regretted after, but it came out, it ended up coming out nice. I, I used the yellow and the blue to contrast one another. I thought that I'd have this image right in the center and the seagulls will be a little bit darker navy i'm gonna add the shadows after and the wings will be more white towards the end as well the, they're like chest area and i also began to think about my light source that's also something that's really important you have to figure out where is your light coming from and that's going to base all your shadows on that 
So here I decided the light to come from the right side and you can see that the sandcastle has white areas on the right and then the shadows are actually on the left. And inside the little windows, they're dark because when the light's hitting, whatever's inside is dark, right? Yes. <laughs> so as I was doing the blue background, I realized that it was really, really hard to make like a flat background with the watercolor and I was just trying and trying over and over to make it super flat. But then I kind of accepted the flowy, washy feel of it and decided to leave it. I also chose a bright red color for the flag because I felt that it was a really nice contrast against the blue and the yellow. So in the end, I actually felt like they worked really well with one another. I wanted to keep all the colors bright and as saturated as possible because we are at the beach, the sun is hitting right on the sand, so I wanted to keep it bright and vibrant. And in this last step, before I call it done, which is usually what I do with all of my pieces, I take a white ink and a thin brush and I start to add all the highlights that I feel necessary, just extra, extra highlights to make things pop. This is probably every artist's favorite step because everything just comes together, everything just works when you do this. You gotta be careful though not to overdo it. I usually do this step last because you really see which areas are asking for that highlight and which areas need a little bit more glow. And that is it. Here's the finished completed piece. I hope you guys liked this one. This was super fun, cute illustration and i hope you guys enjoyed the tips that i had for you today that was so fun but if you guys have any topics that you struggle with or have questions about leave them in the comments below and i'll try to touch up on them in the next video and so you don't miss out on those make sure you subscribe subscribe thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye <laughs>